My name is Nestro, and with me as always is the Guru. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And you know how this goes. We're here to talk a little trash on the week's worth of sports. I don't know anybody except the Guru, and the Guru knows all. Man, you know I know just a little something something, man. Just a little something. Guru, it is episode number 58, and things are starting to shake out in the NFL. The Saints handed the Rams their first loss. Tom Brady and the Pats were too much for Aaron Rodgers. And two Dallas and Washington losses paved the way for the Eagles. Then, in our Week 9 preview, it's a huge Thursday night matchup between Pittsburgh and Carolina. The Seahawks and the Rams go at it, and the Cowboys head to Philly for a Sunday night showdown. Plus, we've got the Almanac back on the show finally to talk a little bit about the college football playoff and help us break down the uh, the whole situation and the Heisman picture. Who's in, who's out, and is anybody going to beat Bama? Then, in segment two, it's Guru's call-outs and shout-outs. We've got our bets with Ben segment with Ben Carey from thecurrencykings.com, and you know we're going to round it out with a two-minute drill. Guru Trash Talk Radio, episode number 58. Let's roll. Ha <laughs> 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 ha, <laughs> man. Wow. Feeling good. Whew. Wow. Here we go. Here we go. Here hey, we go. Man. Feeling good. Hey, you know what? After after episode 60, we're going to start having the shot right there, man. <laughs> you know? We're going to just take shots after that. Because right we'll after, that, after that, we're going to need a shot. After you take it. Because that's what you need after that, man. I'll tell you what, man. This week especially, it's been one of those. It's been mm-hmm. it's been one of those weeks for me. How you doing, though? Man, I'm living a dream, man. Don't you pinch me, man. Don't you pinch me. Yeah, yeah. That's because you don't have a baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <the, laughs> I'll tell you something. This weekend with that with the, the daylight savings time switch and the hour. You know who doesn't care about a clock switch? Mm. A baby. A baby. So I've been getting up at like an hour earlier than I have to, and having it's it's crazy. It doesn't seem to matter what time we put him to bed he still wakes up an hour early this week and it's it's killing me it's, Guru. it's calvin saving time yeah it's exactly calvin <laughs> saving time that's all it is man it's, it's just <laughs> it's not fair daylight baby time is uh is just is just killing me right now but but anyway we are here and we are on the show we got a big show uh mm-hmm. packed ahead we got the almanac uh joining us on the show we talked about to talk a little college football but guru before we get to that Let's talk some NFL. What do you say? Let's talk so let's talk about NFL. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things that happened in week nine. <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's talk about NFL. Sign me Motown Records Seriously, if you still why exist. Why we not? What is this? Man, someone signed a guru man with their raspy voice. Right? I'm sure you can auto-tune that into something there. <laughs> I- so, Guru, now let's uh, let's uh, talk uh, talk a little NFL though. Uh, I want to talk about the uh, the big game of the week here first, which was we talked about in the uh, in the intro. We teased a little bit. The Saints handed the Rams their first loss, and if I remember correctly, you saw this one coming last week, right? Mm-hmm. So this it's a little different of a matchup, you know. It's, when you watch the game, there's certain matchups that's just because everybody's there, the the team are identical in a sense. Mm-hmm. So now it becomes the best. That's when coaching comes in as far as putting your players and you know making that creative play and just basically essentially matchup guys pieces versus other pieces, you know. And I always looked at it like New Orleans overall and all their piece compared to L.A. overall all their piece. Um, New Orleans got one piece that's different than L.A.'s piece. And, and basically came down to it, to that game. And that, and that was? That was number 13. That bad number 13, Michael Thomas. Um, everything everything stayed the same. Quarterback play, um, slight. I give an edge, obviously, to, to New Orleans. Yeah, you got to give it to Drew Brees. Uh, yeah, I, to, to Drew Brees. Offensive mind, uh, uh, play calling, I give an edge to Sean Payton. Um, the game was at home. You give a hedge to to New Orleans. So and, and Michael Thomas is on the field. So it's just the the edge and all the matchup just fits New Orleans to me going into that game. So then my question for you on this one: This is the the Rams' first loss on the year. Then mm-hmm. did New Orleans did they expose something in the Rams, or is this just is it's just a matter of matchups? Is this something that other Personnel. teams can watch and be like, okay, that's how we beat the Rams, or is it in no. order to beat them, we got to be the Saints? Yeah, uh, they don't have the personnel, and they don't have 
Um, you, if you watch the game, look how aggressive Sean Payton was in that. They don't have, most teams don't have that, that coach don't have that testicular fortitude as Sean Payton to go out there and take high risk, go on fourth ground, making sure because you're going against a team that's going to score. So just just taking the more of a high risk for high reward in a sense. So no, nah. and, and most importantly, nobody has Drew Brees and nobody has Michael T and Alvin Kamara. And All Alvin that Kamara. piece is just... Yeah, that offense really hitting it. It's it's so weird to think about because they've been together, uh, you know, Peyton and uh, and Breeze. That's a, a pairing that ha- has been together for quite some time, been very very successful, except in Super Bowls. You know, like they don't they don't have the rings. They have one uh, to go, but it's that is that is. Dude, a, I know franchises that only have one. Oh, hey now. I mean, you said one. I. No, I mean to show for that time period that they have, but Drew Brees is racking up a, a, an amazing Hall of Fame career, and and, and it just the, it are they the cream of the crop in the NFC or is it the Rams? I think there's really three to four teams that's all it's, they all could win it, and it's all based on the matchup that's coming to play. Really, that's all. It's just the matchup and the pieces. Is that's what it comes down to? Because that parody they love, it's, man. It is, dude. Because if one team plays another team because the matchup don't work, it, it won't. It just like put it like this. Like I think Carolina don't match up well versus the Rams. So you don't want, but I think Carolina match up great versus the Vikings. Right. You know, and obviously they played New Orleans, so they know each other. Mm-hmm. So if I was a Vi- I think the Vikings match up better, you know, versus actually uh, Carolina as well than they do, say, uh, uh, New Orleans. Well, I think everybody matches up better to Carolina than they do to New Orleans. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a but, but the thing that- is, though, but New Orleans don't want to really see a Carolina because Carolina knows them. So they'd rather go see a uh, Rams or Vikings, but really a Rams. Like what the Rams just did, mm-hmm. because the Rams are, don't see him um, as often, but the the Vikings, as the last few seasons, they played each other because they've been very pretty well, so they know each other, and obviously they're in the same division as um, the Saints, so you don't want to play the team that knows you. That is that is the case. Hey, on the other side, uh, the other big game of the week was the Sunday night game, the big uh, the big. Packers Patriots matchup more than anything this was a, this was a matchup between Aaron Rodgers and and Tom Brady mm-hmm. two of the the greatest quarterbacks uh, uh, certainly of our generation potentially ever I mean obviously Brady with the five rings he's mm-hmm. uh, and and Rodgers everyone says has the the talent that no one else does and no one's seen except for you <laughs> uh, of course guru uh, this game uh, was uh, the Patriots win this one on interestingly enough a, a pass not from Brady but from one of their receivers uh, uh, throws the throws a big pass to it to win the game for this is this uh, is it the Patriots the cream or is there anybody in the AFC that's going to come up and, and and no no knock this away? Hey, look look we uh, this this is we Steelers saw TCR. Chargers we don't, we don't, Chiefs we, anybody we, we cut to the chase man all that try to get all views bullshit no because we all know it's the Patriots. Like, let's just—it's the Patriots. Not even, not even the Chargers. I know, I know you like the oh. Chargers. Chargers had a big win uh, in uh, in. No, the, the, the Patriots Seattle? is the cream of the crop, right? You know, and then it's every other team versus the Patriots. Till we see that, you know, and obviously, I think we could see that this year with the Chargers. That's my. That's what I've been predicting from from basically last year. Yeah, going into this year. That Chargers you know. big win in Seattle uh, to come out of there with a, a 25-17 win. Uh, a big win, even though, uh, once again, kickers failing the uh, the Los Angeles-San Diego Chargers at every possible turn, missing a couple of extra points and a field goal. That game should not even have been as close as it was, uh, but it was. They had to fire another kicker down there. If they, uh, Can they get their act together or uh, to, to make this run? Do you honestly still believe in the Chargers? I honestly believe... And just like the matchup, I honestly believe, like the Chargers, I, it might be blasphemy, but I see the Chargers honestly overtaking the Chiefs and becoming that number one seed. You know, I ag- I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know me though, Guru. I I agree with you, and it's because I don't believe in Andy Reid. What are we getting into? Week ten coming up here. Yeah, yeah. It should be about time for the decline of the Chiefs. You know, mm-hmm. we'll see if it happens. It's uh, it's Mahomes is the wild card here because this mm-hmm. this kid can play. I still will never bet against Andy Reid finding a way to lose. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We were talking before. I don't. I, I. 
Is this Andy Reid's year? I don't know. I don't think Andy Reid's ever going to win a Super Bowl. I think we're going to see Andy Reid go into the Hall of Fame as the Dan Marino of coaches. You know what I mean? Like, he's he's never going to get the ring, but he's going to be one of the greats. I just won't believe it till I see it. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, that's that's a good situation, but I, I think Andy Reid, obviously, this is one of his best teams, and I, I believe he has it within the next couple of seasons, he have a great shot. He has a great shot. He's had a great shot he for 20 years. Shot. I mean, you know, he has a great shot. And Brady's not going to be there forever. That's true. So it's like, he just got to wait. He just got to wait. Just wait. Wait his time like everybody else is doing. You know, by his time, he's going to be there longer than. And he has my home now. So you know he's going to outlast. And he's just a kid. I, I, he better outlast Brady. Like, well, let's just say nothing is guaranteed. Yeah, I'm not betting against <laughs> that either. Because Brady, uh, you know, keeps doing it. You know, uh, did we settle the GOAT discussion this weekend? Yeah, though? It's, it's over. It, it's, it's him. Gone. Yeah, it's too it's bad. It's gone. All right. It was never a discussion. I don't even know if it was, like, where I, it wasn't on TTI. It was no discussion. No, he's always uh, so. always been. To me, it's always between Brady and Montana. Yeah, and uh, I, it, the numbers are with Brady, but my heart is is with Joe Montana. Look at this guy. As Sweet. always. Sweet. All right, so I got one more to ask you about here, and that's the Cowboys. And uh, and of course, we know how you feel about the Cowboys. Know about the goo, and everybody knows he hates the Cowboys. They look like shit out there on uh, on Monday night. They got they got beat in Dallas. I had I out there. I I tweeted out a great gif of uh, of of Jerry Jones looking frustrated. It's one of my favorite things of the week. They did not have a good week losing at home uh, to the Titans, twenty eight fourteen. The hell's going on in Dallas? Same thing that's been going on since the nineties, you know. Jerry, da- Dallas fan base stuck in the nineties. No, the Dallas are average team. Uh, they, 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 what is it, three and five or something like that now? Four, whatever the record is, just average, just mediocre, below average or average. Yeah, they're coming in at three and five right now. Three and now, five, they are who they are. Um, they're gonna be a lot of blame. You know, somebody got to be blamed. Obviously, it's just what it is. Um, it could be Dak, Dink and Dak. You know, they're blaming Dink and Dak. They're blaming. Well, uh, uh, Jerry looks like he's leaning toward blaming Len- the coach. Lenahan, yeah, Len- this OC, I the OC. I, I'm not a big fan of Scott. I think. Um, I well, don't. What about think Garrett? Scott, you think Jason Garrett's going to stick around there? I mean, Jason Garrett don't call the plays. It's Scott Lenahan. So, um, Jason Garrett's a figurehead. He's not. He's just a guy. Like, hey, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know, like we. I know. think they're all figureheads he's, he's for George Jerry. Bush. Bro. He's he's Bush Junior. So we know uh, right now Lenahan is calling the calls and. He's not a very efficient play caller. So put it like that. He's not an innovative play caller. All right. Well, let's move on to week 10 and get into a couple of previews here. We got a couple big games. Thursday night is a huge matchup. This is the Panthers versus the Steelers. Ooh. This is a battle of a couple of Super Bowl hopefuls here. Mm-hmm. These are these are two teams that like to think they got a shot at this. Mm-hmm. What do you see going on Thursday night here? Two teams I love that, that rise on emotion. Two teams that rise on emotion, um, and the team that the teams that have the biggest emotion. That's a funny thing about it. the team that comes with the most emotion when Cam versus Pittsburgh. It's gonna be a shoo, it's gonna be a shootout. Now Pittsburgh starting to get out of their feelings a little bit. We uh, at the beginning of the season we had them completely hey, well, in their Le'Veon feelings. Bell is, is finna come soon. I think it might. I've be been com- hearing that all year. Yeah, after they, no, he has to come for him to get paid for the rest. To of get the, paid yeah. for anything, yeah. So it's not. That's what it's all about, dude. So he's gonna come. So he's coming not this Thursday, not this week, but next week. So let's see what the feeling situation. Just hold on, hold on to that thought, you know, because I'm sure James Conner is gonna have some feelings. James Conner having a great year. Yeah, so somebody's gonna have a feeling somewhere. So just hold on to that thought. But uh, as far as this game goes, I think it's gonna be an offensive game. I, I think um, the Panthers could score. North Turner is doing an amazing job with Cam Newton. Cam Newton is having one of his career season. Better than his MVP season, completing over 67 percent of his um, passes. I love what he's doing right now. 15 TDs, four picks. Cam Newton is just on fire, and I think Cam is just good enough, good enough with um, uh, Christian McCaffrey and company to take over and beat Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh coming from that tough, tough, tough game versus uh, the the Baltimore Ravens in a battle and a short week. Um, even though they're playing a home game, but I think Carolina will overtake that and take the W. All right, so Carolina beats uh, 
beats Pittsburgh on Thursday night. Another big game this week is uh, Seahawks at Rams. There's some some seeding implications uh, in here going forward. Mm-hmm. Seahawks still thinking they got season. It would have been a lot easier with a win uh, this past week. And still thinking they got something here. Rams playing for, for top seed for, for home field and everything. How do you like uh, this one going? This is interesting. Just like it's always funny because it was such a highly emotional anticipation game between the Rams and the Saints because that was – the Rams and the Saints knew they were going to be in a head matchup two weeks before that. No, they mean the all season, but two weeks before that, they were kind of like, oh, man, we're going to – the, the emotions start to rub them up. Now you're going against – uh, that emotion is not as high mm-hmm. as this game. So I could see a very close game, and obviously it's an inner conference. It's a inner, I mean, it's a conference battle, in a division game. So I think the, the Seahawks are going to give them a harder game. And I smell another upset. I think the Rams losing two in a row. Really? You think the Seahawks take this one? Take this one. I don't know, man. I don't know if they can bounce back. That was a tough emotional loss for the Seahawks. They'll be on the road. L.A. looking to prove themselves. Another good game, divisional mm-hmm. matchup. Mm-hmm. I, I I still think it's going to be the Rams in this. Uh, hey, course. speaking of divisional matchups, we are, we're running out of time here on, uh, before we got to go to uh, to the Almanac. But speaking of divisional matchups, we've got a huge Sunday night game this week in the NFC East where Dallas is coming to Philly. Now, we saw, I noticed you didn't mention the Redskins loss. I didn't see it anywhere on the, uh, on the rundown for the week uh, with the, uh, the Redskins. We'll just save that for Ben. Right. And the, uh, and the Cowboys <laughs> lost this week. Eagles had a, a win two weeks ago. They're looking like they're gearing up and finally starting to get their act together. Uh, they got Golden Tate on the team now. Mm-hmm. Uh, plug him into that offense. Cowboys limping into Philly. Philly getting kind of ready to go. What goes on Sunday night? It's time for the Eagles to, to uh, take the nail and just pow, 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 pow in the Cowboy season. That's it. That's it. Just pound it in. Just nailing the coffin. Don't make it cute. Don't make, just the Cowboys are, are battered. They're bruised. They're just waiting to get exposed. Yeah. They're just waiting to get knocked out. They're waiting to get TKO. And the Eagles are waiting to knock somebody out. So it's just uh, a f- it, they, both teams gonna get what they want. You think, yeah? Yeah, that's what they like. God, Both I hope so, but the Eagles going to knock them out. The Cowboys going to get knocked out. I got to tell you, right now in Philadelphia, it, between the Eagles and, and even the Sixers, there's this sense of like, like last year they started smelling themselves when they got really good, and now they're just not playing at that. They're almost overconfident in what they're doing. I hope the Eagles can put it together this week, but I really fear this Cowboys game for reasons that are just – it seems like the Eagles are talking shit now. Like they're starting to starting to really feel it, and I don't know if it's time yet. You know, the like, Cowboys are done. But again, we could smell, we could smell, we could smell that. You the Cowboys smell, are hey, done. I know one thing: you ain't got to see Calvin poop, but you could smell it. It's true. You're right? I, I know you it's ain't got to see this game, but you can smell it. I know you can smell there. the shit. It's the Cowboys. You, know? you ain't got to see it, but you know, like, oh, I got to, something don't smell well. I got to change that diaper. And you know what it usually <laughs> is? It's usually the Cowboys. <laughs> All right, Guru. Well, let's uh, let's head over uh, to talk to the, the Almanac here. We want to talk a little college football. After we talk a little, uh, we talk the, the, the NFL game, we're going to talk a, a little bit about the college playoff picture. I got one. Playoffs? I had to throw one of them in. The college playoff picture with our man, the Almanac. Almanac calling in all the way from the East Coast. So we'll go to that next year. Talk a little college football on Trash Talk Radio. TTR. Guru back on Trash Talk Radio with the Almanac calling in all the way from the East Coast. We haven't talked to this guy in quite some time. He is our college football authority on this, our college sports authority here on Trash Talk Radio. We haven't talked to him since the last uh, last college seasons last year. Almanac, welcome back to Trash Talk Radio, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. It's been too long, man. I thought y'all liked me, man, evidently. <laughs> I must have made somebody mad or something. I think I made the, the guru mad telling some of them old college stories of his. I ain't been invited back since. Yeah, well, that and uh, you were talking shit about teams that were blue. And uh, you know how that gets right to him. Hey, yeah. he's, 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 a, he's a Carolinian. He's a North Kakalakian, so he <laughs> loves them blue, man. He should be Duke blue, but he's a Tar Heel blue, though, man. That's the better blue. Let's oh, be hell no. Nah. The goo looks better than Duke blue, man. That's uh, all the blue. Nah. Send that no. purple blue out here, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, Whatever, man. So, Almanac, it's great to have you back on the show. We, uh, we were talking before. The college football playoff rankings came out, and, and 
the, the truth of the matter is I haven't really been paying that much attention to them. So we figured we would get somebody on the show who knows what they're talking about here, other than the guru, obviously. Uh, we'll get we'll get someone who pays a lot more attention than the two of us, anyway, to, to talk about these rankings a little bit. Someone with a little bit more authority. A little more authority is exactly right. So, uh... So we've got you on the show here to talk about the playoff rankings. The, the first rankings came out, uh, and they were immediately uh, knocked to pieces by the uh, by the Bama LSU game. So right now, as it stands, Almanac, we've got uh, we've got Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Michigan in our four spots. But I guess the question that everybody wants to know is: Are we going to get to see the Alabama Clemson? Three match the 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 rematch the rubber match in this in this series in, in this trilogy. Uh, I think we probably it's looking like it's trending towards that because those guys are the one and two seeds. So if they did meet in the playoff, it would be in the championship game. And I really can't see the three four or anybody below them uh, jumping the one and two seed unless they lose. And I really don't see them losing uh, any time before the playoffs start. So. Uh, we are trending towards that, but it it would be some interesting matchups. Though I would mind I wouldn't mind seeing Michigan, you know, take on a Clemson, or like if a, a if a Oklahoma can get in there and play uh, a Clemson team. Uh, I wouldn't automatically just just go ahead and push Clemson to the in to the championship game because uh, I do respect what Michigan is doing and Oklahoma. They're more of a one trick pony, you know, all mm-hmm. offense, but. They can score. Kyler Murray is the truth. Yeah, man, you um, score a lot right. of points, you can win a game. Yeah, but but right now the only team that I could real realistically see is giving them uh, Clemson to run for their money anyway is Michigan and maybe Georgia, but Georgia won't be there because they're going to lose <laughs> to Alabama in the SEC championship game. So right, so that brings up the big question anyway: Can anybody beat Bama? Yeah, maybe if we combine the two, three, and four seed <laughs> roster and the one, we may give them a run for that money. But oh, man, man I got a fantasy I, team going up against oh, the Tide this man. year, man. man so, I'm so is, you. is this the most dominant? Like, is this the most dominant Nick Saban team that he has had? Because we know Nick Saban won so many championships. Like, I think I lost hand. It's, it's more than one hand, right? I, I, he, I, he seemed like he has like seven or eight championships. I don't even know how many. But he's six. He got six. Six. He oh, okay. Six. He has six. Five at five at Bama. Five over. One at LSU. So he has a a, a a slew of championships. So is this would say his most dominant and complete team? I think it is because his teams in the past have been so dominant, and it's been mostly on defense or both the lines of scrimmage. And he's always had NFL wide receivers and running backs, and so he's won all these championships with a who's who at quarterback. You know, he's had guys like like a, a A.J. McCarron or a John Parker Wilson or a Greg McElroy, you know. Mind uh, you now, working. this was all guys that played on Sundays now. Don't act like clipboard holders that don't no, get no, no. check. A- they still get AJ checks. McCarron, <laughs> Those AJ are McCarron NFL quarterbacks. On, no, A.J. McCarron played on Sundays as a backup. Greg McElroy had a cup of coffee in the league. He was third string for the Jets. Yeah, I don't um, even know if that counts you know, as playing on a pro team. You're on the Jets. Right, man, but hey, John this, Parker, somebody, he played in Atlanta for a little bit. Man, that's what I mean. A little, man, look, man, those guys, no. they still got to. He, he's never he's <laughs> never had a, he's never had anything like this kid that he's got mm-hmm. behind the center. Now, this Tua, is, he's the truth, man, and uh, he just takes that Alabama program. They were already good. Uh, mm-hmm. Me and Guru, me and you were talking the other day, I mean, this morning, and it, we was both saying, like, it, this was kind of like, Tua is the equivalent of Kevin Durant joining Golden State because he just made them unbeatable. So Tua joining Alabama was already good. They was already elite without him, and this kid just just puts it over the top, man. And right, they made it. Just, they made it to the championship game last year without him. Brought him in halfway through. They brought him right. out of halftime. Right, so spotted yes. spotted the other team. Uh, a couple of points. Brought him in at halftime, and and from that point on, he has just dominated, dominated the college game. Right, exactly. You you got the 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 guy who was starting Jalen Hurts before he he's what twenty eight and two, and he can't even throw past ten fifteen yards. He got like a a completion percentage in the fifties. So it just it just accentuates how good those Bama teams and how good those rosters were um, to overcome the weakness 
of a quarterback and to still, you know, have your team in the championship game annually. And like I said, man, I, I pretty much think it's a wrap for this year. And since Tua is only a sophomore, he'll be back next year. I think it's pretty much a wrap for the next two years. I, I honestly do. And um, well, everybody else, go ahead. Well, since it's a it's a Christmas gift like like this, since it's a wrap for for the for the season, since it's equivalent to the basketball season. Now let's get to the fun part because we know the fun part of basketball is the off season. You know, right. so now let's get to the fun part. So let's get to the off-season awards. No, I want to ask, before we get to that, I want to ask you a little bit more here because we've got to fill out this uh, the final playoff bracket before we go in. We haven't really talked about Notre Dame at all, and that's Ooh. that's been the surprise of the season so far. Uh, yeah. Has an Almanac? I mean, they kind of came out of nowhere, and they're in the top three. How did they get there, and can they hang on to that spot? I think they can. Um, before the season started, their schedule – it looked like it was loaded. You know, they were playing a hoot like Virginia Tech, USC's, all these teams that were ranked in the top 25 preseason. But if you look at all the teams that they played and they beat, they fell off the map. You yeah. look at Florida State, they fell off the map. Virginia Tech fell off the map. USC fell off the map. So all the teams that we thought that they were going to be playing that was going to be good, they actually stink now. So – you really can't – I really can't give a full, full assessment of Notre Dame, but I, t- I will tell you when the change started is when they benched Brandon Wimbush and put the Ian Book kid in at quarterback. It's it's like – it's almost like Alabama going from Jalen Hurts to Tua because instead of, you know, being in low-scoring, tight games, this kid – you know, the quarterback is the most important position on the football team. And he put this Ian Book kid in and it's just, it just sparked the whole offense. They went from – averaging in the low twenties to putting up points in the forties and just destroying people. But I, I really, I, I hate Notre Dame. I'll be honest. You know, <laughs> I, I got a lot towards them. I don't like their coach. Uh, I don't really like their program. And, but I, I don't think I, I'm not, I don't buy them. Even if they make the playoff, I think they'll get destroyed by either Clemson or Bama it's, it's, in the, um, in the first round. It's kind but, of, it's kind of funny too. Uh, all this quarterback replacing the Clemson quarterback too. You, you didn't mention that, yeah. but I, I like. Was it Lawrence? Is that his name? Yeah, I love. I love La- oh, man, this kid, the he, funny he, thing he, is, he, you you talk about two. Oh, I he'll was be, just you just you know the guru love the collegiate, but yeah. the, the the NFL and you were talking about two. We were talking about off off offline a little bit and how two yeah. is great, but this Lawrence kid, he is NFL. I mean the NFL Dude. scouts. GM, I got the buzz on this Lawrence kid. That's why I brought him up. This really? kid is gonna is, be he, the at next Clemson, kid. the Clemson kid. Yes, he yes, is just he a freshman, and he is the since the Andrew Luck of that just pure already. Mm-hmm. I mean, this yeah. kid got it. He's a prototype man. He's six five, tall. He can run. He has a rocket arm. When I tell you, he, he, I think I was watching the Clemson game last week, and they did like the uh, the top five NFL. Uh, quarterbacks just to, in terms of like velocity on their throws mm-hmm. and I think the top one was like 20 uh I don't remember how many miles per hour it was but they showed the top five strongest arms in the NFL and this kid Trevor Lawrence he had he had them beat by like five more miles per hour oh, already shit. this kid is, is yeah I was deal. watching yeah they, they were showing it on the a- a- ABC last week I forgot who that was playing but um yeah he, he will be the number one draft pick in two yeah. in two years when he yeah. comes out so um, he definitely he definitely has more measurables and upside than Tua, um, exactly. as far as NFL. you know the prototypical quarterback. Mm-hmm. But but uh, so, so yeah, is he gonna battle Tua for this Heisman race? Because I, I'm really hype about this Heisman. Well, like, before we get to that, oh my one more God. thing. Guru, I, know, come down. I want the Heisman. I, I want down. the Heisman. Just, like, just go, before we let go of this one more time, uh, so you got Alabama and Clemson, obviously, uh, in your top two uh, going out. How do you see it playing out for here? What are the other two teams you see, Almanac, in that's your That's uh, going to be a feast for freaking Alabama. Who's right, gonna right. That's exactly. Feast? Who are the other two teams that are going to lose to Alabama uh, in the. I think Who's all about Alabama's feast, dude? Feed right. to the Lions. Uh, I've been killing this guy and a bunch of other <laughs> analysts been killing him. I think this is Harbaugh, best team that he has. He finally has a quarterback. He has the top a top two or three defense in the country along with Clemson and Alabama. Uh, you 
you can pick your poison with, with either one of those guys. I think they they all three have the best uh, defensive personnel in the in college football. I think they're both – all three of those defenses are loaded with pros. I think um, Michigan's going to make it. And I don't believe in Notre Dame. I could see them losing. They play USC the last uh, game of the season in California, Southern Cal. USC hasn't had a great year. I can see USC rallying to try to rent, uh, ruin that one of their arch rivals' season. And pick I'm going to go pick ahead. One, and... Pick up a win at the end of the year for their fans too at home. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I'm going to go with Oklahoma squeaking in, squeaking in there in that last fourth seed. I think they go ahead and win the Big Twelve and beat uh, West Virginia in the Big Twelve championship. And I think Oklahoma is going to be the last team. So. By the standings, it will be uh, Oklahoma against Bama in the first semifinal. Whoopee! And will be Congratulations. Michigan, Michigan again. Exactly. Hey, they, hey, they said a good thing their last name. What is it? Their model name is Sooner, Oklahoma Sooner. The they'll, sooner. They'll be, yeah. The sooner to get in, the sooner to get out. <laughs> I tell you what, though, it, it, will be a, it will be a game. It will be a ball game. I would bet the over in that game because – it's going to be some points scored. Every Big 12 uh, game is oh, over, man. You got to bet the over. Every Big 12 game, 12 yeah. game man. Yeah. That, that's, the NF, that's, the AFC, that's the NFC South. Everything's <laughs> over. You know that. Oklahoma has a, it is has the a NFC terrible South, defense. They have a, Oklahoma has a terrible defense, but their quarterback, their kid, Kyler Murray, he's the truth. And you know, mobile quarterbacks, they give Nick Saban the most trouble. And uh, Kyler Murray, he's one of the quickest, fastest athletes. Uh, that I've seen play quarterback in a in a long time, and he's he's not just an athlete; he can throw. He's very accurate with the football, and um, I think that would be. I would definitely would take Bama because they just it's just it'll just be a mismatch at the lines of scrimmage. Um, but Oklahoma would put up points on them, and that Michigan against Clemson game that would be I, I, that would be epic. I would love to see that game, Michigan versus Clemson. Um, that, that would be a great game. So now, uh, Mark, can, can I please hear? All right, all right. We, could, let's could, get to the Heisman. Okay, we already know who's going to win it. Okay, right, let's it's going to be Bama right. by, by okay, a day Bama, and a half. Who cares? Now, could we go to the most important award show that for uh, in, in in the history of award show? Who's going to win the Reggie Bush Award? I mean, the Heisman Award. <laughs> that kid in Alabama, that whole flying Hawaiian in Alabama, man. I got two of winning it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get the flying Hawaiian. That's what he's tapping. Is that is that you just tapping about? Is that what they call him? No, I just made it up. Oh, okay. I like it. Shane Shane Victorino wants uh, royalties on that one. I heard it from some. I heard it. I heard it from somewhere. So I didn't. I didn't coin the term, but I just randomly made made it up for two. But he's having he's having a killer year out there. I mean, this is not one of. I mean, he's he's, is he running away with the Heisman this year, Almanac? I think he is, man. Because his stats is uh, are unreal. Um, and he's not even playing the fourth quarter. They're being so dominant. They haven't needed him in the fourth quarter. I mean, they, they're, I think Bama's averaging maybe 30 something points in the first half and over 50. They're the highest scoring team in the, in the country. Yeah. And think about that. Alabama and the highest scoring team in the country. We haven't said that in a while. So, um, I think it's over personally, um, a close, not a close second, but my second place vote for the Heisman would be Kyler Murray from Oklahoma. Uh, and third place would be West Virginia from, I mean, I'm sorry, Will Greer from West Virginia. So those two Big 12 quarterbacks, they putting up numbers, but but we see this from the Big 12 every year. You know, you, their quarterbacks are going to put up numbers because they play no defense in their conference. Uh, but my Heisman vote, and I think two, I think it's going to be a, a two in the landslide, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, I pulled up the stats here. He's got 27 touchdowns. He's got 2,361 yards. He's got a, a completion percentage of 68% this year, and he's not even playing the fourth. Hey, you know what? I don't need no stats. i tell you this. If he do win the Heisman, he'll be the first flying Hawaiian to win the Heisman. I don't need no stats to tell me that. No, he won't. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Mariota. Yeah, I, I should forget about Mariota because right. I'm going to send the Ravens on his ass so they can keep sacking him and sacking him and well, sacking him. I think he did what, 
I, after he did that, what he did to my Cowboys Monday night, I couldn't give a damn about Marcus Mariota. <laughs> <laughs> Eminem. You know what? Hawaiian probably got more Heisman trophy. Say, hey, take the whole Heisman, move that crap from New York, and hey, take it to Hawaii, man. You know what? Because that's where it need to be. That's... It seems like all the Hawaiians are winning Heisman nowadays, man. Then, yeah. If they'd move it to Hawaii, then it's definitely an honor just to be nominated. <laughs> you get that trip to Hawaii. It wouldn't matter. You still get to go to Hawaii. Yeah. Almanac, thank you so much for joining us again and uh, and helping us clear up this uh, this college football playoff picture a little bit. We're gonna have you back. It'll be in less time than we had you in, in the last one. I promise you, man. Thank you for joining no us. Problem. Uh, Almanac, gr- great to talk to you again. We will talk to you again here at Trash Dog Radio. All right, take care, my guys. <laughs>